Hi, everybody out there in Webland. This is Tom Campbell with Heartland Connections, and uh, we are excited for this coming weekend here, the Play It Forward virtual concert. And uh, we are extremely excited to have Tom Sharp, who will be kicking off at four o'clock our first concert down at the Bishop Hill Creative Commons. And Tom is here to uh, talk to us a little bit and tell us a little bit more about himself and kind of his perspective on uh, being a musician in these trying times. So welcome, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Great to be here. Thanks so much for doing this this weekend. And, and the next weekend, we as artists are very, very appreciative of all your efforts. And, and I've, I've known you for a couple of years now, and, and uh, it's just amazing what you and, uh, and John are doing there. And, you know, you just are continuing to move things forward, which is awesome. All right. Well, thank you. So why don't we get started? And uh, if you could tell us just a little bit about yourself and, and your background. Yeah, uh, well, I've, uh, let's see. I've been a musician my whole life. I can't remember a, a time that I, I didn't know that I was going to be a musician. So I started very young as a uh, four-year-old pianist. And uh, I have had just a very uh, blessed life to, to know early on that I was going to be in this path. I did, of course, don't, you know, you never really know where it's going to take you, but I always knew that I was going to be a musician and, and have followed that pretty formally through, through my, you know, schooling and education and all the way through, you know, university training and, and um, have just been very blessed to have wonderful opportunities to be a, a partner and a composer, play in, you know, large arenas and, and also, you know, be able to play in, in uh, small, intimate places, really make a connection with the audience. So I just, one of, one of the fortunate guys in the world, I, I have to say. Very cool. Have you, uh, is there, you know, one or maybe a, a few uh, main influences in your life, whether that be musical or personal relationships that have kind of helped shape who you are as a musician? Well, you know, I, I am fortunate to have just had so many wonderful teachers, you know, right, right from the start of, of my piano and, and uh, drumming career, you know, I, I was just trained the right way, right from my, my private instructors. Um, of course, my parents are a huge uh, inspiration to me and, and were a very uh, instrumental uh, in, uh, in, you know, helping my path and um you know all through college and and my my uh, my professors uh, were all from either the chicago Orchestra or from the lyric opera of chicago or freelance musicians performing in chicago and so i i was very you know influenced by them i, I was in an orchestra in in chicago where where the uh, conductors that would come in and, and conduct our orchestra were the the you know most well-known conductors in the world and and those those uh you know unbelievable genius musicians that influence on me you know i played under uh daniel barenboim and, and uh sir george schulte and zubin Mehta and pierre boulez and all of these you know names that if you're in the orchestral world it, you know, your, your, your eyebrows just went up like that. Yeah. Wow. You know, the, those are like, you know, the, the main guys that there are. And so they were a big influence on me. Um, of course, you know, I've been in the Mannheim steamroller now for 13 years. And, and uh, the creator of that group, Chip Davis, it, it has been a, a huge influence on me. Um, uh, probably has rubbed off on some of the way that I perform, of course, because he's an amazing performer himself, but even more just an inspiration of a guy that's just like so uh, focused on, on um, you know, doing things the right way and moving things forward, never really resting on past accomplishments, mm -hmm. um, always thinking about, you know, okay, what's next for me what's next for the group um so you know he's been a big influence on me as well i'm just just uh you know again i'm a very blessed guy to have all of these amazing things happen to me wow amazing um 
So could you tell uh, the folks out there um, what your, you know, maybe day to day when you're out performing, uh, touring, or perhaps over the course of a year, your general life as a musician pre-pandemic? Sure. Uh, I had, you know, for the past couple of years, I have sort of honed in on, on um, you know, I do the, the large Mannheim Steamroller Tour, which is primarily a, a holiday tour that begins at the beginning of November. And then we go straight through till Christmas. So it's a little over 50 shows in, in two months, which is pretty, pretty vigorous. It's, um, it's, you know, it's a theater slash arena tour. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one per so we will set up in the city and usually, you know, have, have our amazing crew set us up during the day. And then we give our performance at night off to the next city and we do the same thing, you know, the next day. So um, it very much is, you know, the, the touring life there. And uh, it, it really helps set up the rest of, of the year for me to, um, you know, compose and perform my own work. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the rest of the year I am uh, performing my own pieces, which you will hear on Saturday in, uh, you know, concert atmospheres, like performing art centers um, in, and uh, theaters, things like that. Um, sometimes some smaller intimate sets. And, um, you know, I've been to Cambridge, I've been to um, Galva and, and performed, uh, you know, with, with you guys. And, mm -hmm. um, so that really is the rest of my year is forming and composing I have my life at, at home um, as well, and, and I'm just able to have a really good balance there. Um, I'm also on staff at, at my church as a worship musician, so I'm performing every Sunday there, uh, and just feeling like, you know, for the, I've, I've been doing this for a long time now, but for the past maybe four or five years, it really has all started to come together as far as like really being in this, in this um, uh, professional groove. Mm hmm. So when uh, for the last two months, of course, uh, once things changed with uh, kind of the shelter in place order and uh, doing everything we can to try to, you know, protect the, the vulnerable in our society, everything changed. What you just described, you can't you haven't been able to do, of course. So what have you been doing um, at home, not out on the road? how have you shifted gears and been able to kind of move forward still being a musician, but not being able to kind of be out at least in your main element performing for a crowd? Yeah, it's, of course, I mean, it's an interesting time for all of us. And, and um, although, you know, we are all in this together, everyone personally is, is having a, a different experience at, at home. Um, you know, depending on if you're quarantined alone or if you're with your family, uh, if you have children, uh, so yeah, it's it's been a very interesting time. Of course, the same as all musicians. I mean, all I had a I had a full lineup of of concerts and school assemblies and um, music camps in the summer. That I that uh, you know, of course, all of that is gone. So um, it's it's been uh, you know. I I mean I can't say that it hasn't been difficult. It's but but it's it's. Um, it's a time, you know, that my daughter and I first embraced and, and thought of as a very special time. Um, I try to, you know, think of it outside of myself more than I than than anything, and look through her eyes and look through the eyes of the children and, and see that, you know, I'll, I I feel the you know the worst for them that they're missing all of all of these wonderful opportunities at year end you know and sometimes you know graduation years um so i try to think of it you know not think of uh any sort of poor me situations here because i i know that uh you know everyone is going through this this time together um i think that you know there are some definite positives that that are coming out of this one thing is, it's been so cool to see how everyone, all, all of a sudden, it seems like everyone uh, is uh, even more interested in, in playing music. And, you know, you go to Facebook, and I mean, Facebook Live is exploding, and, mm -hmm. you know, all these different types of virtual concerts. It's like, you know, you, you can pretty much go online at any time, and you can see somebody performing. And I think that that's been, 
been a, a real uh, positive out of this is it's it's taking people out of their and and um uh you know i won't, don't want to say forcing them but encouraging them to to do something that they wouldn't normally do mm -hmm. um, for me as a as a you know professional musician i i wasn't quite so eager to just all of a sudden jump on and and do my concert as a as a um virtual um stream i kind of went, sat back a little bit wanted to see see where things went and and uh, also wanted to kind of think of how i was i was going to go forward with that mm -hmm. um and then and so you know a little time had passed and and i actually have done a a, a virtual a facebook live um concert slash um clinic mm -hmm. and it, it actually it was i just felt really wonderful about it and and i had over you know, 2,000 people viewing it, and I thought, wow, well, that's that's a lot better than my from my live concerts <laughs> in person. So, you know, there are positive things coming out of it, and uh, I feel like I, you know, as we go, we'll see what happens. But it, it, um, I would like to continue to do things like that. I actually decided that instead of you know playing my whole concert or, or playing playing even a, a large part of my concert that I was going to focus on one piece because a, a lot of times, you know, I, you can see this setup that I have here mm -hmm. that I have, have a lot going on at once. And, and sometimes, you know, it might, uh, it, with, the, with the kind of speed that everything happens, it might just pass people by. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm going to take one of my pieces, I'm gonna break it apart and show you all the different things that are, that are happening separately I'll show, give you some thematic ideas to latch on to, and then I'll put it back together at the end and show you how it became a piece. And I think that, you know, the cuts that I, I was getting, you know, people really appreciated that because a lot of these things, you know, they, they can just go by you and, and uh, you know, might be nice to listen to, but you don't really get the intricacies of it. Right. So um, that's when I decided to start my Facebook Live. and. Um, I've always been a, a, a teacher as well, and, and I, I um, you know, have had a small roster of students that I keep with my performing schedule. I didn't necessarily, you know, have a, have a large roster of students, but mm -hmm. um, have have been able to, you know, transfer everybody over to some sort of, um, you know, uh, streaming format. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. I mean, I I didn't know about Zoom in, in February. You know? Neither did I. <laughs> <laughs> so and here we are. Right. So I, you know, maybe who knows? I, you know, maybe uh, I just made myself a, a dinosaur, and that Zoom's been around forever. And, and people that do, you know, have to go to meetings all the time mm -hmm. probably uh, are all pros at it. But I, it was new to me. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's helping us move forward in different ways, and a lot of a lot of uh, positives to it as well. Nice, nice. Um, what would you say for, for somebody that has had a, uh, um, a lengthy and uh, uh, varied career in music, what advice might you give to some younger and less experienced musicians um, as far as how to, because I've seen your live show and, and I've known you, yeah, like you said, for a couple of years and, you know, to hear you describe getting through this time period, you just have a lot of positive energy around you and you just kind of feel that both when you're, you're uh, conversing with you and when you're seeing you perform. Um, kind of coming out of this and, and at some point we can kind of get some back to some sense of normalcy, but uh, to younger musicians as far as their approach to music and approach to, um, you know, performing in this age where you know, we'll have gone through the, this uh, uh, trying to make connections in other ways. And just kind of if you could talk a little bit about uh, making connections with people, I guess it would be with your music, the young people. Yeah, you know, I mean, one, one thing that I always tell, tell young musicians is, you know, I, I have a lot of young musicians come through, you know, our like autograph lines and things like that. And so I, I'm always, you know, either parents or the young musicians themselves are saying, well, what my son who's just starting drums or anything like that. And, 
you know, one thing I say is make sure that you're doing something that you love. Uh, you know, is sometimes it, it's, um, you know, you get so caught up in, in uh, something that you forget to do it to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, make sure that, that um, you know, when, you, when you're working on something and you feel like you get it to a certain place, it's not like you put that away and you move on. It's like that's enjoy doing that you know but you worked hard on this piece now enjoy doing it or you worked hard to get to to this point now just just remember why you why you were you know drawn to these instruments to begin with and drawn to the music it's a it's um you know for me it, it's a total heart thing um mm -hmm. as much as you know i have studied music and and have gone that formal education route Um, so, you know, some sort of uh, formula. So, you know, one thing that, I, that I, I always tell young musicians is to make sure that you are loving what you do and also allow yourself a process too. You know, I mean, music is, is very um, intricate. You're never gonna be, you're never gonna know it all. So um, allow yourself to be where you are and to not be frustrated if, if you know, something uh, to not be frustrated at, at a young level um, and to allow yourself time to get past, you know, a certain thing that might be difficult for you. Uh, you know, that's that's kind of a different way of saying, well, don't quit. But I mean, everybody, you know, well, do you have any advice for young musicians? Yeah, don't give up. Well, <laughs> it's more than that. It's a reminder that, you know, you're not going to be good at everything right away. You know, it's not, it's music is not an instant, instant gratification, uh, you know, format. It, it's something that, that it takes years and years. So allow yourself a process, allow yourself to be a beginner, allow yourself time to learn. Um, remember that, you know, you can sit down and you can work on something and, and get up and then come back to it the next day. It doesn't have to be perfect. So just, um, you know, trying to come from a place of, of uh, you know, peace and just, uh, you know, that music is something that is going to, you know, help lift us all up. And it's not something that, that is the other way where you get frustrated because you're not at a certain place yet. Mm -hmm. Well, and another, I guess, another question kind of to springboard off of that a little bit, um, mm -hmm. as you were talking there um, about, a sort of patience, right? Like allowing yourself the time to not know certain things. Do you find, what would your advice be as far as say technology? Because of course, here we are, we're able to talk at this time where, you know, people's uh, being able to physically be with each other or close to each other in groups is, is limited. Um, and of course, so much of technology is kind of instant gratification, right? Mm -hmm. How do you see that, that sort of push and pull technology can be helpful in a lot of ways, but at another, in other ways, it can, it can give you expectations that can be at odds with that advice that you're giving of patience. What would your, what would your, for somebody that might be a young musician, maybe do you, is that something you talk about at all or? I know with my own kids, it's, you know, you try, you're trying to let them be a part of the culture of their friends, whether they're playing video games or whatever it is. Um, yet at the same time, you're trying to uh, impart to them the idea that, you know, just like you were speaking about, uh, it's, there are certain things that just take time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, anything with technology, it's going to be a blend of, of, um, of, you know, what, what we already are doing and, and, uh, and learning new things. I mean, I think kids are, kids are going to be just fine with the technology aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I look at anything sort of, um, you know, more high tech and sort of the way that I, I uh, think of my own performances and the way that I compose it's a blend of, you know, I, I'm using like traditional instruments and electronics at the same time. I mean, one doesn't take the place of the other. 
Mm -hmm. So the, if, if you can find a way to, to create something that m melds those things together as far as, you know, what you're doing online and the technologies that you, that are available to us, um, and blending that with like, you know, Hey, let's, let's remember to go outside too, you know, and not yes. spend all day on, uh, on whatever messenger, you know? Um, so, you know, every, everything's a balance. Um, so I think, you know, as far as the, uh, the, um, recording aspect of, of it, I think that this time is, is moving us forward. Um, in the sense that, you know, after we're done here, you're probably going to see a lot of albums released, oh, you yeah, know, because, for sure. uh, you know, uh, it, it's, um, it, from, from, you know, people that probably didn't think that they would be able to do something like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to keep going, you know, we're going to go forward and find a way no matter what. Mm -hmm. Very cool. What uh, so to kind of wrap up here a little bit, and it's been a it's been been great talking to you here this morning. Um, what coming out of, of this time period here with the pandemic and and uh, everybody being kind of at least physically uh, uh, isolated from each other to a, a great degree, what ca what gives you hope? Uh, whether it's personally or whether it's a, the bigger picture as far as our, our uh, society or our world, the world at large. Um, you know, maybe some lessons learned coming out of this. What, what, what are those kinds of, uh, of those ideas and, and, and yeah, those kinds of things that hope for the future, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it, we, it is such a, such an interesting time here. And, uh, you know, I, I have to tell you, I wake up every day and, and I see my daughter and I, I'm just blessed beyond belief. Um, you know, to have her and to have this, this time, um, you know, I think a lot of people say, well, this is a reminder to us to not take anything for granted. And, and, you know, if you did take things for granted, well then yes, that is, that is a good reminder to you. Uh, you know, I feel personally like I, you know, I, I thought of every day as a gift already. So I, I'm not really, um, thinking of, thinking of it differently in that way. Um, you know, just very grateful for the opportunities that I have. And, and, um, you know, this is a time to be, to be, you know, telling our children that, you know, everything's going to be okay. I mean, they need, they need to hear that more than, than anything. And, and, you know, sometimes adults need that as well, but, uh, you know, this is definitely a time to be, to be, uh, you know, giving your unwavering, you know, love and security to, to your kids and just reminding them that, you know, although some, this is an unprecedented thing that's happening right now, you know, that the, the world goes through difficult times and, and, and we've had them before and we'll pull out of this. So, um, you know, again, being an artist and being a musician, I mean, this all just blends right in with, um, with, you know, that type of message. And, uh, you know, even going back to, you know, the first Facebook live thing that I did and a lot of comments coming in about just, you know, how people needed that so much. And it's just, you know, reminding yourself, reminding other people, find a way to be positive, find a way to, uh, to keep inspiring, you know, that we're, we're not giving up, we're not going to quit. And we will pull out of this and, and in one way or another, you know, we'll pull out of it. Same thing that's happening now with you guys in this concert series. I mean, this, you know, I don't know if you thought that you'd be doing this a month ago. Um, you know, maybe you did, but, yeah. but um, you know, there are ways forward and, and there will just continue to be more ways forward as we go. Right. Well, so where can people find out more about you if, if, if going to have some viewers out there that probably have not heard uh, your music before. What's the sure. best place for them to find out more about you and to, to find your music? Yeah, well, the, the um, uh, easiest way is TomSharp.com, S-H-A-R-P-E. So there's an E on the end of my name. That'll get you right to my, my uh, main website, my official website. Um, I have a, a fan page on Facebook as well. 
and um, it's easy to find. I, I think I'm it, have some sort of drum drum thing, so it, it easy to just search for on on Facebook. Um, also, I think I you know I think I have a couple people that help me with this stuff, but I I think I have some YouTube channels too. Mm -hmm. um, certainly I'm all, all over YouTube as far as like videos that people can watch so if you just type in to YouTube if you type in Tom Sharp uh, musician Tom Sharp drums uh, you'll you'll find a, a ton of, of videos of, of my live performances and some official you know kind of MTV style um, music videos that, that I've done for some of my works uh, you know, I have two two albums that I perform the works off of quite a bit. One is actually a full symphony, and um, and some of that work is uh, I've I have uh, done official videos for. So you you can find me all over YouTube. Um, find me on Facebook. I'm real easy to uh, to write to as well. I I always say you know if you write to me, I'm going to write you back. I mean, especially now, this is this is a time that we need to stay connected that way. Um, if you're feeling, you know, alone, if you are quarantined alone and you need somebody, you know, you can write to me. I will write you back. I'll make sure that we're good. So, um, you know, plenty of ways to, to uh, find me and, and to, to keep in touch with me. That's awesome. That's a great message there. Well, thanks so much, Tom, for uh, speaking with me this morning. And uh, Oh, it's my pleasure. And we at Heartland Connections and, uh, and this whole area here, um, I'm looking forward to see you performing down at the Bishop Hill Creative Commons on Saturday, uh, May 23rd at 4 o'clock. So we look forward to it. Thanks, Tom. Can't wait. I'll see you soon. All right.